Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Knights of the Pageless Library. We are a little podcast dedicated to reviewing audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, and I am joined, as always, by my brother Ryan Knight. And today, we are taking a look at Metro 2033, written by Dmitry Glukowski and read by Rupert Degas. Yeah, Not the and, video uh, game, the book. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> we are taking a look at the uh, the audiobook version, obviously. That's, uh, that's what we do around here. Um, yeah, and so for anybody who's like, oh, they're taking a look at a video game on this one? No, we are taking a look at the book. Uh, there is a video game, and we are well aware of it. Um, we mentioned before that we might take a look at this series in the future on our Brothers in Arms version or section of the podcast, however. Um, we were planning on it, but then Elden Ring came out, and I don't care about anything else. Yeah, and to be honest, that's uh, that's why it's taken us so long to even come out with this episode, because uh, the release of Elden Ring has really kind of uh, upset our life. So... It's real good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, just the usual stuff to hear right off the bat. If anybody has anything to say about this book or any other book or anything, really, go ahead and email us. kotpl.pod at gmail.com is the easiest place to get a hold of us. However, at this point, if you literally Google search for Knights of the Pageless Library, we'll probably be the number one thing because we are oh, really? we're spread out pretty far at this point. Uh, we're moving on up. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's... We have a very uh, unique name, thanks to you. So it's uh, it's pretty good that we uh, got that. I think would be, like I said, let's see. I'll look real quick. Oh yeah, dude, for sure. Uh, it puts us on YouTube. Our first three things on a Google search are on YouTube, podcast, Apple.com, Facebook.com. So yeah, if you just do a quick Google search for us, you could find us wherever we are. Sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this book. Sort of. We have, uh, we talked about this a little bit, and this episode's going to be a little bit different, and um, you will find out why towards the end. So, with that, what, um... All right, let's get the the basics out of the way. What year did this book come out? So the book was written in 2007, but it wasn't translated to English, I think, until 2010. And then the audio book came out in 2012. Oh, okay. All right, so this the book itself is not new by any means, obviously. Um, and at this point, the audio book, you know, is 10 years old. So I would say that's not new by any means either. Um However, we will uh, we'll get to our recommendations here in a little bit. Um, and then the author, Dmitry Glukowski, uh, is it fair to say this is pretty much what he's known for as far as English stuff this goes? This was his first book, which blows my mind. Oh, wow. Okay, he, I mean, he's, he's also like too. a reporter, but this, is, this was his first novel. Oh, wow. Okay, that's that's pretty impressive. Um, and so this kind of put him on as far as uh, like what he's known for uh, would be like sci-fi fantasy. And then it also says mystery thriller and suspense, which that's interesting that it puts it that way. Yeah, I mean, to those tags on this book, at least the mystery thriller suspense, I think fit pretty accurately to this book um yeah it is definitely a mystery and uh yeah i don't it's suspense I, there's a lot of tension sure yeah that's kind of always and like a lurking threat um speaking of which what did you think and the only reason i say speaking of which is because i think this has a lot to do with how much suspense you're going to feel listening to this. What did you think of the Rupert Rupert Degas's performance for this one? I think honestly, 
it's it's kind of a masterclass. I think he does a fantastic job. Other than I think he makes a bit of a misstep that the first time he voices Artyom, he he uses a different voice. It does make sense, mm-hmm. but for me, especially the first time listening to it, I found it kind of disconcerting that like the first time he voices Artyom, he's like he's super gruff and strong, but that's not how Artyom sounds at all. It, right. it does make sense, but I, I think that's a little bit of a misstep. But other than that, I find it super well done. A lot of the lines that he uses are super iconic, I think. I love the way he says crap. It's great. What do yeah. you think? I thought his performance was good. However, the general narration, as far as like when he's not voicing a character, is all very samey. In terms of like, and I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but it definitely, um, my mind kind of wandered away quite often, if I'm being honest, while I was listening to this. And I think it has to do with how flat his tone is while he's just, when he's not voicing someone, if that makes sense. Um, it's not a bad thing. Like his... His performance is good. His character voices are really, really good, in my opinion. But that he's almost got that, like, could kind of put you to sleep tone. It's right there at that, like, perfect low level. You know what I mean? Like, it's at that low level, like, chill voice. So it was, it like, even while I was driving, I was kind of like, okay, I got to turn this off. Because even while I was driving, my mind would just wander and I would start thinking about other things. Yeah, I I kind of agree. He definitely has like a detached at like affect while he's talking, just kind of, you know, like being our, in RTM's head, essentially. Sure. And it makes uh, more I sense I, because I, of that. I feel like his characters, though, are so mm-hmm. well done. And yeah, and like, I agree with you. I, I I feel like they are amazing. And like he he must have read ahead because he adds so much like like you know, like if there's like, oh, he snorted through his nose, like that comes yeah. through when or if he they laugh as the person. Yes. Like I, yeah. I feel like he it is it is very well done and adds so much to this book. See, and I I really like little touches like that. So I know that like when we talked with Bronson Pinchot, he was very much with like, you read the book as written, period. And that makes sense because a writer wrote it that way for a reason. I understand that you can't like be like, well, this line's stupid. I'm going to change it because that's not what the book says. However, little things like this, like you're talking about, you know, adding a sniffling sound or adding Mm -hmm. a cough or a laugh those i think and i don't know how like an author would feel about that but you voicing those things versus just saying and then he coughed like it it adds a lot it's very subtle but it adds a lot to the book that's for sure yeah and i yeah i I think he's great i I thought i kind of want to listen to more books by him I do think he did a good job. I definitely don't want to say or somebody to think that I don't think he did a great job. For me, though, it like I said, it was hitting that tone where I was like, man, after about 45 minutes, I was like, man, I'm getting really sleepy. <laughs> and that's not even because the, the story is not engaging or the story is bad or anything like that. It was just his tone of voice for me that I was like, man, I could fall asleep. Um, I would kind of argue though that that kind of fits Artyom, like in the sure. in the way that he thinks. I feel like it kind of makes sense for him to be a little bit detached. Sure, and and I do think that that was that did come across in the way he was speaking for sure. Um, side tangent: What did you think about like the little bump music in between chapters? Oh, with the with the railroad tracks. Yeah, well, some of I it does that. have some of it has railroad sounds and some of it doesn't. I, I really, really like that. I don't know. And it's like super tense. and It does it does add some tension for sure. And I, um, I, I think I got to say to you, the chapter names in this book are also like super well done. Yeah, they're good. Like, they're so good. They are good. And I was trying 
it's kind of crazy. I couldn't just find a straight chapter list online because most things when you look up Metro 2033 are referring to the video game. So I was going to refer to that actually to remind me of what happens in the chapter because they are super relevant. Like, it's not just like, you know, I don't know, blood moon. And it has nothing to do with blood moon. Like, it's, yeah. they are relevant to what is going to happen in the chapter. Well, I, I just want to shout out one of the chapter names that I love. One of the chapter's names is called In Exchange for Cartridges. Yeah. Which, like, a bunch of shit happens in between there. But, like, that is... That is such a good way to put ex like exactly what happens. Yep. Like, oh, I just, I, and I also want to mention, I think the translation on this book is got to be like top tier because like it, it all feels so natural. Yeah. So like whoever sure. translated this needs more money because I, I think that, I think it just, it comes across so great and you kind of get a lot of that like Russian flavor in the way that they talk. They, cause they talk a little bit differently than we do. Sure. And I, I feel like that comes through really well. I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with what you're saying. Plus, it says a lot about this as a book, the fact that it was, you know, written back in 2007, and somebody at some point was like, I got to share this in more languages. And then it also got picked up as like a video game series. Like that says a lot about the story in general. Yeah, I agree. A story that very well could become true here soon if the world isn't careful. <laughs> very true. <laughs> but the funny thing to me is, like, listening to this, I don't think, oh, this would make a great game. I really didn't either. Um, and I, I remember playing a little bit of 2033, like, way back when it came out. And then, obviously, I just was playing Metro Exodus recently. Um, but Exodus... And this, uh, I'm going to go off on a side tangent a little bit because, like, if somebody is like, oh, I played Metro Exodus, you know, maybe that's the only Metro game you played, and you're like, whatever we are talking about has nothing to do with that, that's because Exodus was based on Metro 2035, the third book in the series. So they are pretty disconnected in a way as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I haven't listened to the next books the one thing i don't i don't like i know we're not talking about the video game but i don't like in the video game that rtm is a silent protagonist i don't like that either it, um, yeah I, I just admit exodus will be a different episode but like i that's the one thing i cannot get behind in exodus it's just like why doesn't right. he freaking speak especially when the books are written about him it is well, based right, on and, him and he has a lot of character in himself and it's just so yeah. weird that he just doesn't speak i agree um I, this book could have easily, instead of being called Metro 23, it could have easily been called The Adventures of Archfiend because that's that's what it is. That's what we are following. Adventures of Rat Boy. <laughs> um, okay, so let's cover a couple more basic things real quick. Um, obviously, we got this from Audible. You, as we've said before, you know, if you wanted to, if you don't have Premium Plus and you wanted to get that, you could get this well, book for this free. This is actually an only on Audible book, though. It all the metro series is i think is only from audible yeah and again we've said this in episodes before but if you like listen to this like in a 12-part series on youtube by some random person reading it obviously your mileage might vary from our experience so yeah i mean if you're gonna be like oh i thought the narrator was terrible just remember <laughs> we listen to it a specific way if you listen to it a different way it might be different for you right um this book is a long boy this one comes in right at 20 hours which is 20 hours and one minute don't drop that minute that's yeah you're right i gotta do that justice um but this <laughs> we've said it plenty of times before i think um this isn't obviously not the longest book you could find you could find plenty of longer books however i think 20 hours is pushing that probably upper limit for most people you know what i mean um, yeah for sure i yeah i usually think about eight to ten hours is a sweet spot for most books unless they need more like game of thrones and stuff like that aside monster hunter those kind of books they need more than like 10 hours most I stories i love them thick boys though I, I and i agree i tend to agree with that 
Um, however, like I would not recommend this as somebody's like first listen. Like, man, I've never listened to an audio book oh, before. Let me check this book out. <laughs> don't start here. <laughs> right. For sure. Okay, so let's get into why as far as is this easy to follow? No. Okay, I'm glad you agree because <laughs> I, I didn't think so either. I think the overall, the general premise of this book is pretty easy. Like if you took a zoomed out view and you were like, like that, if you read the chapter names, after you listen to the book and then you read the chapter names in order, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense because he went, he did this, 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 and this in each of those chapters. But when the actual meat in each chapter, like each chapter is essentially a short story unto itself and it for a good reason. really is. This book is just chocked full of detail. Correct. There is so many things going on all simultaneously. And really like Arteon's just passing through. Yep. And I, it, I've, I find the details very easy to miss. But I think yes. they are extremely important. Yep. Um, and so that's going to have a bit to do with what I was saying at the beginning. This is going to be a little bit different. Um, so what's your, what's your overall recommendation on this one? I personally very, very, very much enjoyed this book. But I feel like I'm kind of a person who's in the pocket for this kind of thing. Like, I love me a weird Russian novel sure. all day. I, I don't know, because it just feels so different. But I, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like the writing in this book is just so very well done. And the characters all feel so real with, sure. like, what their wants and desires and, like, like what they're trying to accomplish on their own. is It, it all feels so real to me. Sure. But I will give the caveat, this book is extremely dark and heavy. Like, it is oppressive and depressing. Like, it is, there's a lot that happens in here that, like, had me, like, in shock. Like, oh, my God, what? Yeah. But I kind of enjoy, I, I really enjoyed, like, that dark, like, a, a atmosphere a lot. And I, right. I think there's a lot to love here, but I, like... If if you are not like an audiobook veteran, I probably would not check this one out. It is as we already said it's pretty hard to follow. And like I've listened to it like almost 3 times and I'm still confused about what happens in some of the parts. Yeah, I listened to it one and 3 quarters times. I almost finished the second time and same here. I there's still parts where I'm like I have to rewind it and I'm like what is he talking about? I don't understand like and yeah, I, and they they dip in and out of like weird perspectives. That is, that's kind of hard to follow. Like, it, what's real and what isn't. Yes. Yeah. But but I feel like that actually lends to the story more, because like spending time in these dark tunnels is gonna be disorienting, right? Like it's yeah. it's gonna mess with your head, and I I feel like that really comes through really beautifully. Okay, but I've I've, I've probably gushed enough. I really like this book. But if you're squeamish, don't check it out. But like, if you enjoyed like uh, Roadside Picnic, definitely pick this up. For sure. Um, we actually got a comment on one of our uh, YouTube videos that the guy who did Roadside Picnic um, brought the word stalker to the yeah. Russian language. Which comes so, up in this book. Exactly. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. It, just interesting little detail. Um yeah, I I tend to definitely agree with you as far as that stuff. I I would definitely recommend this one for, like you said, you know, veterans of listening to audiobooks. Now that sounds ridiculous because most it, people would now be now like, that I'm like here, you say it, I'm like, God, we're such freaking douchebags. And, yeah, and I'm not I'm not by all means, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. If you want to try you, you listen <laughs> I'm gonna to this listen book. to this book even though I've never listened to one. I'll show these guys. Go yeah, for it. That's by all means do that. But also if you email me and then you're like, you're like this, I don't understand this book at all. I'll be like, well, tried to warn you because, and it does, it sounds incredibly douchey when I say something like that. However, I honestly think this is 
it's just on a little bit different level as far as like, like I said, I was listening in, to this in the car most of the time and I had a hard time focusing on it. So if you think you're going to like throw this on and do your homework or do work for your job, good luck as far as, yeah, you might get your work done, but good luck understanding this story at the same time. And if you can do that, by all means, let me know, because I'd be pretty impressed. Yeah, I'd be pretty impressed, too. Um, I'm definitely not saying don't check this one out. This is a very good book, and I think this book is just incredibly deep as far as you're going to get more the more you listen to this one, which For is... Sure which is an incredible thing when it comes to like an audiobook because it's one thing like for a movie as far as rewatch value or a game with replay value but for a book to keep giving more each time you listen to it is an incredible thing to stumble across in my opinion yeah i really agree um, this book is also like a really interesting case study of just like human psychology Right. And it's also, it's, it's nice to, I think the reason to like this roadside picnic and things kind of stand out is because they are not written by like, you know, Americans in America. They are written by people in a different part of the world, living a very, very, very different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's very cool to see those things come across in the writing because a lot of this stuff as, so kind of dancing around the topic, a lot of this is obviously based on, it's a post-apocalyptic story based around the metro in Russia, which is where people who survived fallout are living now. I think they're so, in Moscow, I think. Yes, you're correct, in Moscow. So basically civilization, if you think about it, it would be like almost the world civilization shrunk down to this incredibly small space and you had to cram all these different ideologies and beliefs and thoughts and people into this very small space and see how they survive together and i think the way he wrote this book really really gets that point across um almost to a point where parts of it i'm listening to and it kind of gives me anxiety yeah because for sure because it's so real exactly i mean and as far as like it would give me anxiety because you think about it like rtm would be in one place and talking to these people and their beliefs are x y and z and he he goes to the next station which is essentially a town or a city and their beliefs are completely different but they're not very far apart and right uh, like <laughs> It really I, shows you like the how you could condense the world down into a small space and how crazy, you know, different things can be very close to each other. And one of the things I really love about this book is like the rumor mill kind of like the way everybody treats information in this book kind of gets sure. passed down like hand to hand. Mm -hmm. And so like you hear a lot of hearsay about stuff. Or like events that RTM was a part of and you hear like other people talking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I I think that it's just like masterclass kind of stuff. Like it's so good. It's so yeah. well done. Very cool. And like just like the kind of legends around like certain places and like certain parts of the tunnels and stuff. It's just like, ah, oh, it's just like chef's kiss. I think it's so good. And things that like are almost sci-fi to a point that as as far as I understand, don't really get fully explained. Like, um, no. I don't really want to, I can't really go into any of it without it being like spoiler heavy, but there are definitely things that happen that I still, even after listening to it a second time, am like, I don't understand why that happened. So it does, like, if you're looking for a sci-fi, you do get some of that as well, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what do you think? Uh, we gave our recommendations. We've kind of danced around the story quite a bit. So here's the reason this episode's going to be different. We're not going to go through this one beat by beat. Mostly and because we are too stupid. 
Exactly. We do not want to do this a complete injustice by simply skimming the surface on the little bit of detail we could remember chapter by chapter. So if you came here looking for a Sparks notes for school or something, sorry. Oh, we, out of luck, nerd. <laughs> yeah, we are not going to be able to give you that, at least in this episode. Um, I, I mean, we can kind of talk about like the main arc, but just I we can talk about like RTM's mission a little bit. But because even really like all the way up to the ending, I because there's a there's a little thing that happens at the end that I'm I'm still like what yeah like what was that sure and that's how I yeah I I just don't I don't want to do this a complete injustice like I think this book is honestly too I think depending on who listens to this one you're gonna react in a different way if that makes sense because like I said there was there was definitely parts where and it doesn't happen very often when I'm listening to a book I felt a bit of dread or like I said anxiety while listening to it which yeah. definitely puts this on a different level for me as far as books go so so yeah like we've we've said it a bunch of times the the, the book is from Artyom is like first person perspective and we we get a lot of stuff like in his head and not but like Artyom is an orphan his parents like the station that they were in was overrun by rats and his mom handed him off to like a random soldier he he turned out to be a great guy so it didn't it didn't end up mattering actually i'm not even sure if that's his mom now that i'm talking about it it kind of it could have just been some lady that's yeah as far as we are that's very interesting too that you bring that up like rtm is narrating the book essentially we're hearing everything kind of from his perspective and he's almost a um, unreliable narrator because yeah. he doesn't know a lot of the details. So we, as the listener, this isn't like a book where it's like, oh, well, I already know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. You kind of don't because you're getting it as if Artyom is telling it to you. So you only know what he knows. And he's still like piecing stuff together. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. Just uh, I would I would say just give kind of a broad strokes. Like I said, we're not going to go. Well, into, I like, I was going to set up the, the beginning. So like Artyom essentially gets a mission. He meets this man called Hunter, which which I think is a little bit of a translation thing because I'm pretty sure his name in Russian would be Hunter. Like he would say like English Hunter because they make it like your name sounds really weird, but it's just Hunter. But I'm right. pretty sure his, like, in the Russian book, his name is still Hunter. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Sure. But he, there's, there's these things called Dark Ones. They're kind of like humans, but gross, essentially. And he he thinks they're trying to invade the, the station because, like, when Artyom was a kid, he kind of accidentally, like, let them in. The one time yeah. that he went up on the surface. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. so, so Hunter asks him, he's like, I need you to go to police. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Police. Yep. I, I can't, I always get that mixed up with prospect mirror. I get those two confused all the time. Also, there's a ton of Skaya names. Yeah. Skaya. Skaya. Like there's so yeah. many like Skaya names. I was, okay. So going a little bit backwards here, that was also a part of this that made it a little difficult for me in terms of listening and it's probably the same for somebody like maybe that is russian native and they were hearing a story about the united states because yeah. if you're not familiar with these locations or the way the naming scheme works yeah like exactly it might be like somebody from russia hearing like you know alabama georgia and florida whereas to me that's supernatural but like yeah. hearing these names back to back like police rishkaya Bujinskaya, like, I was like, where the fuck is this dude? Like, I don't understand. Uh, it is very is. hard to keep the station straight in my head. And I could never really, like, make a map of the metro in my head of, like, the no. journey that he traveled. Neither could I. But that was, so, uh, I think ahead. that was a huge sticking point for me, too. Like, I, hey, I should have brought it up earlier. But. I, I agree. That part is super confusing, but that's not really the book's fault, I think. 
no, 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 no. That's that is my fault as only being, you know, I am American through and through. Obviously, I'm just fucking ignorant of the rest of the world. So <laughs> so Hunter gives Artie on this mission to go to police and take take. He gives him like a cartridge casing that's like a specific talisman that he wears around his neck. And he's like, take this there, show it to the commander so that if something happens to me, they can take care of the dark ones. And so this book is essentially just Artyom like making his journey through the metro. And it's about like the different people he meets. It's not an action book at all. Like he probably shoots what, like four or five times. And I mean, bullets, like four or five bullets total. One yeah. interesting thing I love about this book is that bullets are currency, which yeah. is super interesting. Mm-hmm. Like they, yeah. that, like everybody kind of has to make that trade off of like, okay, do I buy something or do I protect myself? It's very interesting to me. Yeah, like the trade is based around uh, cartridges, essentially. Yeah, so cartridges. you might trade food for cartridges, or you might trade cartridges for food, like. Mm-hmm. It just depends on what your needs are at the time. And every station, too, that's also what's a little interesting. Each station, you know, maybe a jacket here is five cartridges, and in this station over here, it's 25 cartridges. Yeah. So they have their own economy as well through the whole metro. Like I said, it's really almost as if you take either the world or an entire country and you shrink it down. Mm-hmm. To that as is a very small good way to put it of a space as you can put it in. I I like that too. That that's also like Artyom, because he pretty much grew up in the one station he was in for twenty years. He didn't experience a lot of other things. So as he's going through these other stations, he's coming across ideologies and religion and different beliefs that he has no idea about but i love how he like when he comes across like the jehovah's witnesses and he is like the only one in the group who's like uh this doesn't make any sense (laughs) yeah i love that that. whole through line with the giant worm is so interesting dude Mm -hmm. it is yeah like it is so crazy that whole thing is just like like kind of like took me aback it's like whoa sure um so i, I mean we can so uh, spoilers rtm makes it to police through tons and tons and tons of hardship the shit that he goes through literally is disgusting yeah. and like it's it's cr- it's crazy it's it, i don't i don't even know like it's it's a lot there are there are a lot of moments that like like almost have me tearing up over like some some pretty nasty stuff that happens. Yeah, and like sure. RTM is kind of a he's a pretty stand up guy. Like he's like, like to what, a fault, to a but to a fault, but like in a realistic way. And like his actions have direct consequences. Like right there, because there, there's a moment where he some like this. He's traveling with this. You think it's okay if I talk about this? I mean, I think so. I, I mean, again, we did pass the spoiler wall. So if this is, I should have said it earlier, but if this is something that interests you and you don't want any of it spoiled, you know, stop listening now and then come back. But we're not going to go into a lot of detail. You trust me, we're not going to spoil this to the point where it will ruin the book for you. No, absolutely not. Because <laughs> the, the nuance is what's good about this book. And I'm painting in huge broad strokes here. But so he's traveling with this old man and his son. I don't know if that's they, right. They don't ever directly say that. He just says that's that just it, what I. Assume. He just says the kid's name. He doesn't ever actually say it's his son or not. So. And his son is like mentally challenged. Like he can't really speak. Right. And they go to like a really strict station, and they're just trying to pass through. But the 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 guy doesn't understand because he can't speak, and he like bares his teeth. And kind of gets in a scuffle with the guy and gets shot. And Artyom, reacting on instinct, shoots the guy that's that's keeping him, like that that killed him, like without even thinking about it, he just shoots him. And Artyom had like just met these people, like yeah. a day before. But he, 
and that guy he shoots is like a military captain or whatever. Yeah. So it has, like you said, direct consequences for him. Yeah, he goes to prison. They kick the trash out of him. Like it is, it's bad. It's it gets it gets pretty dark. And yeah, I I I really like that scene. I think it's very well done. I saw it coming from a mile away, and I I didn't want it to happen because I knew it was going to break my heart because it's just it's a hard scene to hear. But, yeah. So, well, you want to you want to like kind of move on to the end and wrap it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, like I said, we aren't we won't go into a lot of details on this one. So. Yeah, because I there there are a lot of moments in this book I really really like, but so he makes it to police. They try to find this magic book thing that I. This part I don't really understand. I, I'm kind of just... going to gloss over it because, like, Archeon's like a chosen one. Well, they think so because he mentions that he, like, oftentimes basically hears voices or well, but the main reason or has I think visions he's chosen, right? Is because he makes it to that station where nobody's there and he meets these two guys that are smoking hookah and they kind of like reinvigorate him and like fill him with determination and he moves on his way, right? But there's really nobody there. Yeah, supposedly there was no one there. So they think that he like speaks to prophets essentially. Yeah. So they try to find this book to and it ends up freaking going south. There's like cuz they're like right underneath the Lenin library and they there are these things that are called librarians which are like mutated humans which are yeah. creepy as fuck. Oh, like, dude, it's super the creepy. description and then what happens while he's in the library yeah, with the dude. librarians is so creepy. That, that bit with with he sees the light, you know, like moving back and forth, and it's the fact that it's the librarian is rolling that guy's flashlight back and forth on the ground is like with his horrifying. with his other hand. Yeah. Yes. It's that whole thing, and the fact that it mimics their voices. Yes, dude. Yeah. Oh my god, it's horrifying. It but, creeps. So he, yeah, that part creeps me out. He gets he gets the guy killed and essentially screws up and. So from, from there, they they find this guy who's a missile man. So he has access to nukes, I'm assuming. Well, they're like, yeah, I think they're like, uh, I kind of picture like those Russian trucks with all the missile launchers on the back. Oh, some command and conquer like, stuff? Yeah, like basically like warheads, not necessarily nuclear, but like, you know, uh, powerful bombs. Yeah, and they so they meet this guy, they find some missiles, and they blow up the botanical gardens, which is where the dark ones were coming from, and the book ends. Right. But doesn't Artyom basically gets because through the whole thing, he's like getting it like either whispers or visions or dreams in which he kind of sees dark ones more often than he thinks he should. And then towards the at the end, right? one of them basically speaks directly to him but it's like as far as i understood it's also not physically there right yeah so basically leading artyom his like final thoughts and at least in the first book is that maybe the dark ones are the ones that are right and we as humans are the ones that are wrong is the way i took it well the interesting thing is the dark ones are not necessarily hostile because like even when they encounter them, they just shoot at them and kill them. But right. they approach unarmed and like slowly walking. Yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird because they're not necessarily hostile. I just know that he mentions that he's like perhaps the dark ones are the next step in human evolution. Yeah. Like because the dark ones survive where humans can't in the like you know fallout wasteland. So basically the, what it kind of boils down to the way I looked at it is he's like humans are like struggling to survive maybe in a place they're not even supposed to survive basically. Right. It's pretty fucking deep though. I'm, I am probably completely missing the mark, but like, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's like a brief overview of Super Metro. Brief. Just yeah, twenty thirty three, super skimming the top. So just so everybody knows, um, this might be a book that we revisit in the future. Um, if that's something that would interest everybody, like if you want us to try to go in detail step by step, let us know. Uh, but that is probably something we will do in the future. 
because we also want to try to do this a lot of justice. So yeah, and I, I would like to listen to it maybe a couple more times to really to really like refamiliarize myself with all of this stuff. At least, um, yeah. This you probably like if somebody's like, man, I really want to start a podcast, but I don't know what I could start a podcast about. You could probably start a podcast based solely on the Metro 2033 universe. Like, yeah, you really could. It is big enough between the three books and the three video games. You could start a podcast dedicated solely to that. <laughs> yeah, you could. Wouldn't even be hard. Uh, but yeah, what uh, you got anything else for this one? No, I, I've freaking gone on long enough, I think. Yeah, I think we, uh, like we said, we didn't want to get too terribly off in the weeds on this one because we don't feel like we are qualified. So, um, yeah, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, if you guys have anything to say about this, you know, please feel free to send that our way. We would be glad to hear from you. Um, anything else? Uh, what are we doing next time? As far for a book? Yeah. Oh, we haven't decided, have we? Mm -mm. I don't think so. Well... Uh, we might have to uh, shoot. I, I was gonna, I don't want to like give away something that we're doing in the future, uh, but it's gonna have to be a book. Oh, okay, y yeah, you know what? I'm dancing around, right? Yeah, okay, that's yeah, it's gonna be a book, hopefully, narrated by that guy. Uh, but I can't find them off the top of my head, so. <laughs> Okay, so stay tuned for Mystery Book. And I think with that, thank you all for listening, and we hope to catch you in the next